Hi everyone, it's Halo 4 Tutor with another Halo 4 gameplay commentary. As always, you know you're getting my signature tips and tricks to help you start winning more often and having a lot more fun while you're doing it. Now, I've had a lot of requests for traditional Infinity Slayer games, so that's what I'm going to bring you here. This is from Complex 4 on 4 Infinity Slayer. And, uh, you know, I had a lot of really good moves, good plays during this game, but I also made some critical mistakes that cost my team a few points. And in the end, we, we lost by a few points. And so I want to identify some of the things I did well, as well as some of the things, you know, some of the mistakes that I made. So you guys can kind of learn from both sides there. Because, you know, I don't win every game. I don't play perfectly. I try to uh, learn from my mistakes. So let's just jump right in. Um, you know, here I make classic mistake. I'm not watching my radar. I'm fixated on one guy in front of me. I get blindsided by somebody with a sword. And, you know, that's I should know better. I do know better. That's Halo 101. Keep an eye on your radar at all times. Uh, I lost track of that, and I ended up paying the price. I died. Now, here, there's a two-on-one situation. Two -on -one situation. Clearly, there's two guys in there. I know one of them has the sword, so I really ought to just get out of there and regroup with my teammates. But uh, I don't do that. I very foolishly uh, engage two enemies at the same time. It's close quarters. I know one has a sword. There's a very, very low chance of success in that situation. You want to avoid situations like that. You want to create and seek out situations where you have an advantage, okay? There's so many ways you can do that. You know, approaching with better weapons or approaching with teammates using teamwork, surprising your opponents, um, you know, all kinds of things that you can do to gain an advantage. And I wasn't doing any of that towards the first of the game. So I paid the price with a couple early deaths. Now here are the sword guy is coming after me again, and I get lucky this time around. He he walks right over my grenade. I finish him off with the, the headshot, and now the tables are turned a little bit. See, now I am in close quarters with the uh, sword, so I have the advantage, and uh, I also have active camo, which is going to make him a little bit. Uh, it's going to make it harder to find me. So I'm actually going to go on a little killing spree here with the the energy sword, because uh, the opponents are actually making some mistakes right now right um they know that i'm in here with the sword uh it's close quarters combat you really ought to just uh you, you shouldn't come in here unless you have like maybe a shotgun or an equivalent weapon or perhaps um you know uh i don't know you're coming in here with with a rocket launcher or something like that right so if you know you can come in here and you can handle close quarter combat with the sword by all means come on in here and try to take it from me but that's not going to work. You see here, I get a nice, easy double kill. I've got a sword spree, uh, ordnance drop on the way, and uh, things are really starting to roll a little bit for me here. So I made some mistakes early, but uh, kind of making up for it now with the energy sword. Now, I'm not going to keep camping in here with the energy sword, so don't don't worry that the game is going to get really boring and dull. I'm going to grab the beam rifle right here, which is kind of the uh, covenant uh, sniper. Uh, this is a really a fantastic weapon. They brought it back it from, uh, you know, it wasn't in Halo Reach. It was in previous installments. And I really like this sniper quite a bit. Uh, you can fire two shots in quick succession. So if you don't hit them the first time around, you do have a great opportunity to pick up that second body shot or headshot if you need it. And really what I wanted to do is use my active camo up here on the roof of this building. And... Um, this is really a great spot on the map, especially have if you have some nice long-range weapons like the Energy Sword or the DMR. Now, unfortunately, I kind of get sandwiched here. Uh, I really was trying to get out of this situation, but uh, nothing much I could do. There's two players on me. Fortunately, my teammate bails me out, and I get a, a distraction medal there, but I was dead to rights. They really should have had me at that point. So there's my sword spree again, a, a sword kill. Um... Let's see, so my loadout here, again, I'm using the active camo with the armor ability efficiency loadout. Uh, those two work very, very well together. And so, um, you know, if you're using a armor ability that you use a lot, like active camo or maybe jetpack or Promethean Vision, that AA efficiency uh, upgrade is really worth checking out if you haven't tried so already. Oh, look at that headshot with the beam rifle blasted that guy right out of the ghost i mean goodness that was a great shot um here not so good so you can see my marksmanship here was great when i got that guy in the ghost but here i couldn't finish off the shot uh, across the map end up getting the assist and this guy's got like a plasma repeater or something like that absolutely melts through my shields i don't stand a chance uh finally get taken down just prior to a killing frenzy 
So you can see I started off a little rocky, and what happened uh, a couple minutes ago is that the game reset. I don't know if you noticed that a couple minutes ago. When it reset, it kicked back to my primary loadout. So instead of having active camo, it automatically switched me to um, the regen field, which is okay. It's not. I just wasn't expecting it. So you'll see that I go into like I threw out the regen field in, in an awkward time, I believe, later on in the game because I wasn't expecting to have it. I thought I had active camo. So here's where my marksmanship, I should have slowed down. This was a mistake. I had this guy dead to rights. He has nowhere to go. We're team shooting him. I should have been able to take him down, but I wasn't pacing my DMR shots, and I paid the price. Um, now here is this guy who's kind of sneaking in the building, so I'm kind of sneaking too. What I don't realize is he grabbed my energy sword from me, and that's that. So really, it was getting very frustrated to continually be taken down by this guy with the energy sword. Here, this guy is on the roof. I pop his shields. I still can't finish him off. I was getting very frustrated with that energy sword guy that kept creeping around and taking me down. And I kept getting these guys down to one shot, and I couldn't finish the deal. That was very frustrating as well. You need to be able to hit them with that last shot. You need to time your shots. You need to get into a, a view. You got to do whatever you can to finish off those last shots, which I wasn't doing very well of that in this game. The other thing I wasn't doing, again, neglecting my radar. Look what happens. I get snuck up on by the ghost, and uh, he comes up and just blasts me. And you're going to see a little later in the game, I'm going to get um, splattered by the ghost as well because I was not paying attention. So I know that, you know, I, it feels like I'm always just kind of pounding you guys with the same old stuff, right? I keep telling you the same old things. Watch your radar work together with teamwork, uh, you know, do things like that. But I keep bringing it up because, you know, you can spend a whole career mastering even very basic principles like that. So, you know, I, I hate to keep repeating the same old stuff, but you got to do it. Now here, I, I absolutely, I'm so dumb. I'm chasing a guy with the sword. Don't do that. Like, I should know better. If you don't chase guys in general, as chasing is usually a very bad idea. Because you're going to come around the corner and they're going to ambush you, whether they have a sword or not. They can usually peg you with uh, some nice nade placement, or maybe they've got a teammate waiting for them around the corner. Or maybe they're just flat out going to escape and recharge their shields, then turn around and, and uh, start attacking you. You just really don't want to chase in general. But if you're in uh, close quarters, your opponent has a sword. Uh, here I end up getting a comeback kill because I've been playing so lousy the last couple minutes. So, again... You know, I'm just trying to point out that I don't always have a perfect game. I try to learn from my mistakes. And, um, you know, this is one of those cases where I had a lot to learn from. And, you know, I did some things well. You know, you saw I barely missed out on a frenzy earlier. And I'm going to finish the game off strong. Uh, kind of from here on out, I actually have a pretty strong game. But some, some things I needed to improve on. Overall, really, I probably cost my team two or three points. And that's about the margin that we lost by. So, you, you know... A lot of these Slayer games, you can't expect to blow people out. You can't expect to go on really huge sprees. You probably can't expect to play mistake-free. But let me tell you, you know, when it comes to Team Slayer, you just have to find the little things and find a way to score one or two more points uh, during the game. If you can just improve your game by one or two points throughout the game, that's going to be the difference. That's going to be the margin in victory there. And uh, you'll see, ultimately, I believe my game, I mean, I had a good game overall. I think I had like 21 kills and like 9 deaths or something like that. Maybe if you go back and count for yourself, uh, you, you can tell me in the comments below. But um, I, I, overall, I mean, I had a pretty good game, but we end up losing, like I said, by 2 or 3 points. And I wish I could go back and change like just 2 or 3 plays during the game. If I could do that, I really think we would have come out with a win here. So even though... Technically, uh, a lot of that's on my teammates who basically everybody went negative but me. Um, you know, a lot of it's on them, but a lot of it's on me because, you know, I realize going in, I'm going to be the best player in the game. I got to act like it and uh, got to carry my team. So, uh, let's see here. What else do we have going on? So, oh yeah, okay, big top. I did want to mention this. So the top of this building here, this is really going to be a very critical area on the map because a lot of the action is going to occur right on the roof. And if you can control the roof of this building, you really have a significant advantage because for the most part, this is a fairly open map and you can just shoot, you know, you have sight lines everywhere on the map. You can see almost anywhere on the map from the top of this roof and it's big enough that if you fall back to one side, you know, you can get the cover that you need from, from one side, right? So let's say this guy starts shooting me. 
Um, I can always fall back a little bit like I am now so I'm getting shoot, shot. I just fall back so that the edge of the roof protects me and uh, you can really get a lot of protection. The one downside is that you can get up on this roof from a lot of different angles, okay? So it's really easy for guys to come up behind you because your radar is smaller than the roof in general. So if you're on one edge of the roof and somebody's sneaking up on the other edge of the roof, they're not going to appear on your radar. And of course, there's no cover up there. So once they have you in their sights, once they can get up on the roof, boy, you know, they can shoot you very, very quickly. Watch this headshot right around the corner. Oh, great shot. Great headshot. Then he drops a saw, and I was trying to get at it, but again, I kind of get ambushed here. I can't find a way to get get to safety, so I get, I get taken down again. But it's a really tight game, as you can see. This one's really coming down to the wire. Uh, was it 460 to 490, 500 at this point? So we are shoot a couple short, sorry, short a couple points, like I said earlier. And uh, man, it, it always comes down to this. Just two or three uh, kills during the game is going to be all the difference. So you have to find those subtle ways to make it make an impact on the game and just pick up, you know, make two or three plays that you otherwise would not have made. And there's so many ways you can do that. Um, you know, one is trying to go into an encounters where you have a better weapon than your opponents, right? Try to pick on opponents who have uh, not as good of weapons as you. The other thing you can do is because, you know, you can take people's shields down very, very quickly is look for opportunities to surprise people. Because if you can get two or three shots into somebody if they aren't looking, you can really uh, take them down very quickly. Here again, I wasn't paying attention to my radar. I was too busy reloading that rail gun. I ended up getting splattered by a ghost indoors. Really, really amateur mistake, guys. That should never happen. So we end up with a defeat there. But again, I hope I was able to point out a couple things that you could learn from as well as a couple things that you can improve. Um, you know, if you enjoy this style of gameplay, let me know. Uh, Halo 4 Tutor, please like, comment, and subscribe. Add this video to your favorites. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.